So the saving thing works fine here, but uh, let's improve it a little bit. So first thing we do is let's validate what files are added here because so far we don't have that file validation. If we go to our um, admin area here, this file type is not allowed, could not upload image, okay. So we do have this validation here uh, on the PHP side, but it's a good idea to validate files even before, as soon as they click save changes, so that at least we, we can limit the errors that come from PHP side. So what we'll do is let's look at how to validate if the file type at least has the right file extension. Now file extension can be changed at any time. So somebody may try to upload a movie as a photo by putting .jpg or .jpg at the end. However, it won't pass the test in the PHP side because the type will be different. So they'll still get this error here but we can do some simple validation at the beginning here. So I want to do the validation from here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll create um, an array. So I'm just going to say, just like we did on the other side, we'll add allowed file types and let's create an array like so. So we allow, uh, these are file extensions. So remember that on the PHP side, we're checking for the meme type, which is what we are provided with here. So meme type is much stronger than just a file extension because this is more difficult to edit, but the file extension can be edited, but no matter, we're going to still use it. So we'll put JPEG, some photos are .jpeg, and others may be PNG. I don't know if we allow PNG here. Yes, we do. Okay, so those are the file types that are allowed. So how do we check if this particular one is the right file type? So we have images.files.name is the name of the file here. Remember that this is how we did it to get the file name last time. Uh, Wait, load image, file.name. Yes, that's what we did right there, dot name. So we're going to do the same thing here. So to check, we will do this. First of all, let's get the file extension of the current image. So I'm going to say extension is equal to uh, save profile. But first of all, I actually need to check if an image exists. This is important. So what I'll do is, uh, let me put an if statement. I'll say if image dot files zero, hmm. if that exists, Okay, what I'll do is, uh, let me do this first, before we even go this way. I'll just put a return here so that it doesn't go any further. What I want to do is see what this says, the type of this is when, uh, when it's valid and when it's not. That's how you can uh, know this thing. So let's do this. Let's say console.log so that we see it tells us what's in, in there. So I'm going to say type of, this is how we check for is set in the way we use is set in PHP. Here, this is how we do it in JavaScript. We check what type this item is. So I just want you to tell me the type of this item right there so that I can know the difference between when it has a file and when it doesn't. So I'll refresh my page and inspect the element to go to the console. And then I'll just say save here. So I haven't added a file and you see it says undefined, which is nice. But if I add a file, let me add in a random file here, and then I'm going to save. And now it's an object. So if it's undefined, there's nothing. If it's an object, then it contains something. So I can say if type of this is equal to object, 
because now I know that's what it says when it's valid. So I'll put an if statement and say, if this is equal to object, then we are good. So image was added here. So I'll remove this and then get the extension from there. Let's try that. So the extension will be equal to images dot files dot name so this contains the name of the file that we've added and then now i want to split it so i'm going to say dot split now split works like explode in php where you can uh, create an array based on a specific character in a string so in this case what i want to do is put a dot there so a file name can be something like um, file dot uh, dot jpg um, but so if we explode it from here we're going to have two items in an array this one and this one but the file extension will always be at the end because there are certain files that are like this this dot file or name because a dot is also part of the file name so you can have several of these dots in the file name but you know that the one at the end is the always the file extension so what we are doing is we are telling it to create elements of an array here based on the dot here and then just get the final one. So this is what we're trying to do. That's how we get the fire extension. So once we split this, this will result in an array. So this will be an array. But instead of assigning that array to here, we'll use another array function called pop like that. So pop just gets the array, the item it removes an, an item from the array, from the end of the array, and then returns that item it has removed. So we've created a, an array here and just removed the, the item at the end and put it in there. So that's the fire extension there. So all we need to do now is to check if this extension is in here. So we'll use the uh, if allowed dot uh, includes. You know, I can never get this right. Sometimes it's, I think it's contains, sometimes it's, but I think it's includes. So this includes uh, method returns true or false, depending if an item is part of an array. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm saying allowed dot includes extension. So if it's in there, then we are good to go. But I must make sure this is a lower string um, so I'll say to lower case. So this is camel case, so careful with those capitalizations. So if this includes the fire extension, which means it's allowed. So we just want to know if it does not. So we'll put an exclamation point. And then if it doesn't, we'll do an alert and say file type not allowed. Or to be more clever, we can just say only files of type, okay? And then let's add a type. Or we can say, let's do this. Only these file types are allowed like this. So it's much easier. Space, and then let's add plus. Then we're going to have allowed and convert it to a string. So I'm going to say to string like this. And then I can tell it in here what I want the string the strings to be separated by since it's an array. Uh, capital S there. Like this. Okay. And then we don't want it to continue here. So we're going to say return there. Alrighty then. So hopefully this is understood what we are doing here. And let's try this out. So I'm going to refresh and try to add files of type that are definitely not allowed. So this is a video and uh, it's a video, right? And if I say save changes, only these file types are allowed. Good. Now, it would be a better idea to add this to, to when the item is added i guess but this too is fine i guess in profile image i think it's better to be specific here okay good 
Otherwise, if we add something else like uh, an actual image, it should work fine. And there we go. Okay, good. And then when the upload is complete, I just want the page to reload. So I'm just going to say window dot location location dot reload. I don't know if that's how you reload a page. We're going to see. I'll refresh and let's try again. Let's add an image and save. Upload complete. Page was reloaded. Okay, that's better. Okay, so things are looking good. And what else do we need here? Um, now we need to collect every other thing here. So we already know how to collect the image this time. Now we need to collect everything else here. The first name, last name, etc., etc., And then add them to the form as well. So instead of and adding them from here, save data, we'll add them right here in this object and then send it to the send data function. This send data function should it's supposed to be a uh, universal function that whatever you want to send to the other side should, can be sent through this, okay? The only thing that's not universal here is the progress bar because we are very we are being very specific on which progress bar to grab. So what we could do instead is we could add a second param here that's optional to which will select which progress bar we are using. So in this case, we are using this particular one. So I'll copy this and let's just do this and say uh, prog bar is equal to, and let's put that one as the default. And then I'm going to copy this and put it here plus prog bar and remove that. Okay, this way it means if we want to use a different progress bar, we can simply add a different class name that corresponds to that bar. And then that's the progress bar that will be active when this, pro uh, this process is going on. At least this makes it a more universal function than being too specific. Okay, so now let's collect everything and put it in here. We've collected the image, but let's collect everything else.